looks kind of peaceful. Looks at the ceiling when Koopas are involved. Hey, what's up, Koopa Troop? This is Surya and I'm Mort. I'd talk to you guys today about the Wii U Experience. Now, what exactly is the Wii U Experience? Well, pretty much Nintendo is holding a bunch of conferences or events, really, um, showcasing the Wii U uh, before releases this holiday season. Still no official date at this time, unfortunate, but it's true. This sometimes this holiday season is all they said. But anyways, so this event here, like I said, it is just a way to show off the Wii U before it gets out. Kind of get the press to, you know, talk about it a little bit and get the public excited. But, well, not necessarily the public, you see, because only a certain people could go to it. Um, that were, well, for example, I was invited to go to it because I was a loyal Club Nintendo member. So, good for me. <laughs> um, no, get rid of this. It's starting to smell um, like chocolate. <laughs> so, anyways, the Wii U experience, really cool thing. Um, it's really nice that Nintendo is doing this. Um, I think there was already one in Miami. Um, I went to this one in Atlanta um, this past Thursday. And... Um, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I was actually able to bring a friend with me because um, on the invitations you can invite other people and then after that they even gave you a couple of the guest passes to go with you so I was able to bring a friend with me. So first got there about 30 minutes before it opened up for us and um, so we kind of waited around there, met some other people outside waiting in the, in the line I was kind of forming so talked to them, you know, what game would you like to see? Oh you know, this, this and this and this and uh, it was pretty cool, and then um, as other people came out from the previous group, all getting pretty excited. They let us in, and then they gave us these uh, nifty lanyards and badges um, to uh, kind of sign us in. And also these badges acted as a um, sort of way to, uh, you can swipe it at certain places and you get a photo taken, or you could talk about, you know, your experience at the Wii U experience. Um, and you can put it on Facebook or whatnot. But one thing I wanted to point out kind of about the badges is that um, they're kind of personalized for, like, for the city. And then like, you know, on the badges, it has like a lance all over it and it has uh, two peaches on it, which is like the state symbol. So that's pretty neat, you know, that Nintendo's kind of going a little bit farther and, you know, making it a little bit more personalized for the, you know, the location. Which is, you know, another nice thing. So, so at the Wii U events, we're just kind of waiting around before it begins and then... This guy op you know, opens up this curtain and is like, you guys ready for the Wii U experience? And, you know, we're just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> and so then they let us in and all chanting, Wii U, Wii U. And, you know, giving us high fives and stuff, getting us excited for the, the games and the Wii U system. And so we kind of walk into this area where um, it's this giant, like, uh, the uh, event show floor. Event floor, yeah, okay. Um, and so... There's like a one large room, pretty much, um, with a bunch of uh, consoles and TVs lined up against the walls. Um, in the center, there was like a um, sort of pillar um, with uh, Nintendo Land themed games there going on. And there was like diff another corner where you played a couple other games. And then they also had four different rooms where they had a special uh, certain games in. Like uh, one room had Batman Arkham uh, City Armored Edition for the Wii U. Um, let's see here, uh, Zombie U multiplayer mode, that's interesting, uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, like the, uh, Sing, that new Sing game or whatever, uh, for the Wii U, and, uh, Just Dance 4. And so, you know, they had those in their own separate rooms, so you wouldn't embarrass yourselves dancing, <laughs> looking like a fool. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't do it. But I did do a lot of games, and, um, I guess that's what you really want to hear about that, really, is the games. So... Let's see, so I started first off with Zombie U. Um, this guy I was talking with in the line, he also really wanted to see zo uh, play Zombie U and try it out. So we both kind of just walked over there, and uh, we were the first people there, so got to try it out right away. Um, now I guess before... Oh, let's see, here I go again. Off. Before I talk about the games, I should probably explain a little bit, maybe uh, impressions about the gamepad and how it looked and everything. Pretty much, uh, first impressions, it's a little larger than I thought it would be. Um, obviously, it's got to be fairly large enough so because it has a screen on it, and you've got to watch that screen, I guess, it's, you know, for certain things, and 
other games will have you doing with a lot with the gamepad, so it's got to be large enough for your hand and, you know, whatever to see it. Um, and also the quality on that does look really, really nice. I don't know if it's true HD or anything like that, but it does look really, really nice. It's not bad at all. Um, it's, it's really good, in fact. <laughs> and then so, um, it has a lot of buttons on it. You have like, um, it's, it's, it's kind of set up sort of like a DS, sort of, you know, with the screen in the middle and on the right side you would have, uh, the X, Y, B, A buttons on the left side you have your D-pad, but also above those you have, uh, two thumbsticks, um, to, uh, two, yeah, two analog thumbsticks. And then above that on, like, the top of the comp, uh, the gamepad, sorry, um, you have, like, a left and right bumper and also a left and right trigger. Um, it didn't feel too stiff. Uh, really, it was. It did feel pretty nice. I was also, yeah. Um, I should also say it felt pretty light too, like lighter than you would think, um, which is a plus because you don't want to carry anything really heavy all the time and move it all around and everything when you're playing games. So it's really nice that they did that. You know, it's it's pretty light. Um, so okay, now that I've talked about the gamepad, let's try to talk about the games. So Zombie you I played first. Um, Okay, and first of all, I, I was playing with inverted controls, so my guy the whole time just like, blah, 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 walking around, you know, just looking everywhere and <laughs> being pretty stupid. But I, I did fairly okay with that. So, Zombie U, it's, it's a pretty interesting game. It's about the zombie apocalypse in London, and um, pretty much you can take control of a survivor, or a series of survivors, actually. That's the cool thing about it. So pretty much if uh, you're playing as a survivor, and if that survivor gets uh, infected by and becomes a zombie, you the game then puts you into the body of another survivor, and then you continue on as that person. Um, you lose, the of course, your items and stuff that the previous survivor had, but you can pick them up from the survivor when you run into him when uh, in the field as he's turned into a zombie. And so you can kill him and get your stuff back, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a really cool idea, and it, it works pretty well. Um... So, like, you had um, guns and melee weapons and everything, and um, so I probably had the most fun, actually, with the cricket bat. Uh, I probably did the most killing with the cricket bat, too, because uh, I ran out of bullets pretty quickly for the pistol and then switched to the cricket bat and just went to town on a lot of the zombies. <laughs> Although, most of the time, I was just, like, looking up in the air and smacking zombies on the head or whatever with the cricket bats. It is a... Uh, it was a little challenging, um, probably because the person before me, he actually did pretty good and got pretty far into it and got to a certain point where the zombie horde started attacking the place that he was in and then he got killed and then I had to go in there with the zombie horde there, so a lot more zombies to deal with and first time playing it, it didn't go so well. <laughs> so, but no, it was a really fun game, um, really enjoyed it. Um, the gamepad on that, with the game, it's like an inventory sort of screen, you look down at it, you can kind of mess with ammo and gun selections and everything like that, but if you hold it up to the screen, it becomes like a radar sort of thing, you can look around, um, you can find items and scan things or whatever, and I think it's also like a scope for the sniper, I didn't play that, I didn't see that at all, so, or like a, a crossbow or something like that. But um, I didn't get to play that. But it, it does work really well. And um, you really do have to like move quite a bit around this. Like if you look in a room and you want to like see behind you, you have to actually like start turning to behind you to act, then it'll actually read it. It does have a really nice fully functional gyroscope. It, it really is impressive. Um, so, and the graphics look pretty good. Um, maybe a little bit stiff and slow, but um, I, it's probably just because it's a demo. And they're probably, you know, fixing up everything as it's been finally, you know, for final development. So that was the uh, single player of the Zombie U. But then uh, after that, my friend and I, we went over to the uh, this different uh, this, uh, room in the back corner to play some multiplayer mode of Zombie U. Now this was a, um, I actually didn't know that, you know, they're going to have this, you know, as a demo. Um, I didn't, I didn't think I really heard anything about that from E3 or anything. So it's a pretty interesting mode. Um, one person takes uh, the, uh, the Wii U control, Controller Pro, I believe that's what it's called. Um, as then they become the uh, survivor. And then um, the other person uh, has the gamepad and uh, plays as like the zombie master controller. Um, the, the objective of this multiplayer mode is uh, the survivor team or the uh, zombie team has to capture a certain number of flags. And whoever captures, you know, all of them uh, wins. Or the survivor uh, gets killed by the zombies, then the zombies will also win. Um, but it's more difficult for the zombies to capture flags than the survivor. So, like, for the guy with the gamepad, 
you have like a map of the whole area or whatever and you have like a certain amount of like um, zombies you can put out onto the field and they each cost like a certain number of points and um, for example like maybe the, you want to put like a speedy zombie out there but he costs a little more you can put maybe like a slower one but he has like more uh, you know hit points you know stuff like that so there's a couple different types of zombies you can put out there it's it's, it's pretty interesting it's it's a pretty fun and you have like a type of zombie that can <laughs> go after a flag um, but the survivor has to go around and capture the flags for him or herself and kill off the zombies and everything. And um, you can only have certain, uh, you obviously can only have a certain amount of zombies on the field if you're the zombie master, so uh, make sure you kind of place them wisely and, you know, kind of plan for where the survivor will go. Um, and there's also a certain area around the survivor you can't put it, obviously, that'd be kind of cheap, you know, just spawn zombies right on top of the guy, that'd be, that'd be bad. <laughs> But, um, no, it was uh, very fun overall. I uh, really did enjoy it. It's a very interesting mode, you know, hope they kind of go with it a little more, um, maybe expand it, maybe have, like, we didn't try it with, like, there's only one 1v1 one one or whatever. Um, maybe kind of cool maybe if there was, like, more survivors against the zombie horde, because it kind of seemed a little unfair for the survivor, because this guy pretty much had almost an unlimited, like, uh, endless supply area of zombies, pretty much, and the survivor only had, like, a certain, you know, only his guns and whatnot. So, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. That was just the demos. So then after trying out all the Zombie U single player and the multiplayer, uh, I tried out a little bit of the, uh, the New Super Mario Bros. U. And um, that game is, is pretty fun. Um, it's just classic Super Mario Bros. but on the Wii U and in HD graphics. It, it really looks nice. The backgrounds are just gorgeous. And, you know, all the worlds seem really, really nice and everything. Uh, I got to try out all three levels of it. Um, I actually also got even the try out uh, both just controlling, um, like I had the gamepad all the time, and I got to try out both playing the game by myself and also using being uh, the assist, uh, the uh, like the assist pad or uh, the assist player or something like that. I, that's what it, uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but um, pretty much uh, for the single player, obviously it's just you know pretty much the same controls for Mario. Um, you have like your D-pad moves left and right, X and Y is run and B and A is jump and stuff like that. Um, the new squirrels, uh, flying squirrel suit, it's, it's a bit fun, um, you know, just run and kind of fly and he'll slowly glide down and if you shake, you can actually shake the, uh, gamepad and if you shake it, like, you know, like the Wii mode, he'll do a spin or when he's in the, uh, flying squirrel suit, he'll, uh, f f uh, fly up a little bit and, um, of course, if you shake the gamepad, if you don't have the suit or whatever, he'll, Mario will just do a, a spin in the air, kind of, you know, like the shaking Wii mode. And then uh, later on, I became the assist on the game, the assist player on the gamepad, and there's uh, they brought in three other people to play as uh, Mario and Luigi and Toad. Um, so what the assist player does is you can put blocks, you can tap on the screen anywhere because on the screen it's always what's ever on the TV screen. So you kind of touch wherever on the on the gamepad screen. And little blocks will appear, and you can kind of help uh, the characters on the screen from falling, or help them get to higher places and stuff like that. Or I guess you can screw them over by blocking them somewhere, but that'd be kind of mean. Why would you do that, jerk? <laughs> but um, I, I didn't do that. But you can also tap enemies, and they'll kind of stun them. Um, so you know, it's it's interesting. Um, I kind of wish you could do a little bit more with that. I mean, I, I'm not exactly too sure what else, but. It, it kind of felt maybe a little lacking, but it was it was fun, you know, to help him out and stuff like that. You know, it's just kind of an extra player on the side kind of thing. So New Super Mario Bros. Wii U, it's a good game. <laughs> Very fun game. So after New Super Mario Bros. Wii U, um, went over and tried to play a little bit of Rayman of Legends, um, but that line was kind of long at the time, so I decided to go and try out the Wii Fit U, uh, which were no line at all. Um, so I was like, what the heck, might as well try it out. You know, I'm here to have fun and try out new games. The Wii U, pretty much. And uh, the guy over there is really, you know, getting people pumped up for this stuff and everything. So I went along with it and everything, and I had a good time. Um, so, see, so yeah, there was a couple mini games you could choose from. Uh, the first mini game I did on that was the uh, this trampoline game. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Trampoline bounce, stuff like that. So, but pretty much what you have to do, I guess I'll stand up for this. Um, so pretty much, um, I can't see me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so pretty much what you have to do, I'll just stand, so pretty much what to do, so you get on the board or whatever, put it on the board, so I'm on my feet or whatever, and then like, so you're on a trampoline, and then to start, when you, whenever you land on the trampoline or start off, you kind of push down, like, put more weight down on the board, and then kind of spring back up, and then the, um, uh, your guy will keep bouncing up, and then, um, sit back down, get back up, <laughs> and then, um, 
So, and then, like, when you're in the air or whatever, you can get you, uh, if you do better bounces, um, you get higher and higher in the air. Um, you don't jump on the board. That's, you don't do that. <laughs> Um, but what you want to do is like when you're in the air, it'll look above you and you, as you're falling back down You want to kind of like lean uh, Make sure your head is straight over this red circle in the center of the uh, The trampoline so that you can bounce higher and higher And so you're always kind of making sure you're balanced and leaning towards the center or whatever and then Pushing back up and jump, you know to jump higher and higher and uh, I got a pretty good score I think it was like oh, like over 2,000 feet or something like that, you know I was pretty, was pretty proud of myself. Got a professional rating, you know. And uh, so that was fun. And then, but um, since there was still no one there, you know, trying it out, uh, I just tried out another mini game, And um, it was like uh, called Dessert Course. And with that one, let's see here. Um, so pretty much with Dessert Course, you're on the board and you have to walk and kind of like step slightly up and down on the board to walk or a little faster you run. And you have to hold the game pad kind of like a waiter's tray. And so you, uh, you hold it with two hands, and you have to make sure it's always balanced when you're walking. But the thing is, you have to actually turn uh, like so with your body and the gamepad in order to actually turn. So you have to walk and kind of like turn like this. But the, you know, the thing is, it's kind of hard to do that as well without tipping it. And so like you, have, you give like this dessert to a guy or whatever, and then you have to go to this chef and get another dessert. And eventually they add two and three and so on and so forth. I didn't do so good with that game, but I had a good time with Wii Fit U. So after a little bit on the uh, Wii Fit U, uh, the Raymond Legends line kind of uh, shortened down a little bit, so I got into that and waited a little bit for my turn. And um, I was put onto the gamepad, so that was cool. Uh, I got to try out something different, you know, and uh, pretty much with that game, the gamepad is his assistance. Uh, the other person was Raymond, holding the controller, uh, Wii U controller pro, and... Um, Luckily for me, that guy had played Raymond Origins before, so he was pretty good at that. And uh, I was kind of quickly getting into how the system works. Pretty much you have whatever is on the TV screen, on your gamepad screen. And But except for um, you had a couple different things that are highlighted on it as it, the game plays on. And you can kind of touch it and drag it around, like different things or whatever. Um, cut things, move things around and kind of help out Raymond or whoever's on the screen uh, with certain tasks. And... Um, and there's actually some areas where it's required that uh, the guy with the gamepad has to like uh, rotate a uh, wheel or uh, some spikes or move uh, platforms around and so that the other player can get through without dying. Uh, it's, it's a little interesting, cause especially like the wheel turning ones, because uh, you do have to turn it pretty pretty far on some points, uh, rotate it quite a bit. And um, But it, it definitely feels pretty good, and uh, I really did like the uh, gameplay mechanics of that. It's it's really uh, it's pretty intuitive, and um, it's pretty exciting. I really love Raymond Origins. You guys probably know that, um, even though it's <laughs> it killed us quite a bit. But I, I did like it a lot, and uh, I'm really looking forward to Raymond Legends. Um, the game, the interface between the gamepad and the TV and the other guy next to you. It really did make me actually uh, talk quite a bit with the guy next you know next to me who was controlling the Rayman. And, um, you know, saying, like, you have to go here and here because these platforms are, like, spikes or, you know, they'll kill you. Because um, on my gamepad screen, it showed me which ones were good and which ones weren't. But on the TV screen, it didn't have that. And then other places, you know, he told me, like, yeah, rotate it this way. Or, you know, can you, can you move this thing out of the way? You know, and stuff like that. So, um, it's, it's looking like the Wii U will really definitely um, uh, help, you know, make really good use of cooperation and actually communication uh, between players in the same room and maybe even online and stuff like that. So that'd be pretty cool. Uh, so after getting a little bit of Rayman action, I went over and uh, tried out... Um, my friend and I, actually, we were both... Uh, we kind of split up for a little bit, tried different games, came back together, and we tried out a bunch of those uh, mini-games from Nintendo Land. And surprisingly enough, actually, Nintendo Land is turning out to be a really, really cool thing. Um, I really did enjoy it. And um, I got to try out... Let's see, I got to try out the uh, Animal Crossing minigame and the Luigi's Mansion minigame. Now, first I tried out the Animal Crossing minigame, and um, I kind of didn't really get it at first. Um, I guess I really wasn't listening to the uh, lady as she was kind of pointing out what to do. I was one of the four characters uh, collecting ca uh, uh, collecting candies, because in, in this minigame, uh, we have four players trying to collect uh, candies. They had to get a certain amount, but you have the, the guy with the uh, gamepad is control of two guards with the uh, both thumbsticks, I believe. Right? Uh, yeah, and so... 
uh, he can move around, and um, if he sees you, he can do some sort of like attack, that like a, a dash attack. And if he hits you, you're knocked out. You come back after a couple of seconds. Um, but if he if he uh, knocks out or catches all four players, then uh, he wins. And uh, well, we we lost pretty quickly actually with that one. Um, I didn't really understand the controls too well, but I mean, if I had a little more time with that game, I'd probably like it a little bit better. Um, but the Luigi's Mansion minigame I tried next, and I really, really like that game. One of my favorite games there, um, for sure. Um, even though it's like a short minigame, it was, it was really fun. Um, pretty much what, how it works is, uh, you have the four ple uh, people, or however so many, um, with the, uh, Wii controllers on their side. And they're, uh, people with flashlights in this kind of a small haunted, uh, house or whatever, in different rooms and everything, and... They have to work together to uh, capture this ghost that's going around, and the ghost is the player with the gamepad. And only the guy with the gamepad can actually see where the ghost is at all times. Uh, the four players can't actually see the guy, ghost unless there's like a lightning flash, but that only happens randomly and only in certain areas light up where you can see the ghost. So uh, most of the time you don't know at all where it is. Um, it says like if the ghost is nearby you, your control will rumble more and more. I didn't really notice that, but... Uh, <laughs> Maybe uh, I'll probably try to pay attention more often to that, but it was it was really fun because um, it actually also involved a lot of uh, communication and cooperation with the other people that were um, with the flashlights trying to capture this one ghost because uh, you really didn't know where it was going to be and uh, you really had to like stick together. It was it was kind of left for deadish in a way. You know you have to stick together. If you try going off on your own, you're pretty much dead. <laughs> and um, so. We did pretty good for a while, and uh, my, actually my friend was the guy with the gamepad and the ghost. Um, so he caught one person or whatever, and what you do is when he catches a person, they're pretty much dead, or pass out. And so what you have to do is you have to go in, with your flashlight and light them up, and after probably like five or so seconds, it, it takes a little while, um, they become fully revived again. Um, and your flashlight does run out of battery, you know, so you have to go and find batteries that are randomly placed about the mansion. Um, to refill the well, flashlight, otherwise it's weaker and it won't do as well against the ghost. Um, so to kill the ghost, you have to go up with the flashlight and shine on it, and it does like 10 damage or like 20 damage at a time if you do really well. And if a person gets caught by the ghost, you can shine a flashlight on the ghost as he's trying to take him away or whatever, and um, you can actually stop him from doing that. So um, that's one thing you have to do. You always have to make sure you're with someone else within that minigame, otherwise he, the ghost will be able to pick you all off. and. Uh, that's kind of what happened in the end. Uh, some people got um, separated or whatever, and the ghost got to them. And I tried reviving one of them. My, the ghost, my friend, got me, and then eventually, you know, got the other guy. But we did get him pretty low on health, so that was it. Was a really fun game. I really did enjoy that one. So besides those two mini games, they had you play as well the uh, Donkey Kong Crash Course and the uh, Zelda Battle uh, Course. I didn't get to try those, but I saw those a little bit, and they looked pretty cool. Um, the Crash Course is like a puzzle sort of game where you have the gamepad and you tilt it and how much you tilt it or whatever is how fast this cart will go down this obstacle course sort of thing and you don't want to run it you don't want to tilt it too far or else it will crash into the wall and you have to start all over um, so you have like you try to beat a certain time or get a good time or whatever for that game and the Zelda Battle Quest is pretty much you you and a couple other players you go through like on this on rail kind of shooter sort of thing but you have like the Wiimote you can swing around and attack like a there's sort of like a toy uh, versions of uh, Zelda bad guys or villains or whatever. That looks pretty cool. Um, they could have tried it though. So I would say if Nintendo Land turned out not to be like a game included with the Wii U system, but it was an actual outside game or whatever, I would I would pick it up. It is all, the mini games in there are definitely worth it. I mean I, I exact I don't know exactly if it you know if it's part of the Wii U system or not, but uh, it's definitely a really really fun mode. And I'm glad that they're working on that. It's definitely a little more in depth than Wii Sports. Which was also fun, but you know, Nintendo Land is, is definitely the place to be. So after my friend and I tried out a couple of those Nintendo Land mini games, we uh, split up kind of again for the last uh, pretty much 20 minutes. Uh, they were starting to close down everything, so we had like pretty much only one more time uh, chance to uh, try out a game. And uh, I really wanted to try out Pikmin 3, so I went over there waiting in line, and I was the last person to try it out, so yes. Um, the game looks incredible. Probably the best looking game there. The environment, like the background, the backdrop settings, you know, on the, uh, versus the cartoon characters, you know, of Olimar and the Pikmin and whatnot, it really does look really nice. And the controls, 
are actually just the uh, Wiimote and Nunchuck. Um, the gamepad only actually has like a map. So you can look at that. And I guess you can use just the gamepad too to control everything. I'm not too sure how that works out. But they only uh, use the uh, Wiimote and Nunchuck control setup. And so if you uh, play the Pikmin 2 with uh, Wii controls, it pretty much works like that. You, kinda, you point the screen with the Wiimote and that's where your uh, cursor will aim. And that's where you will throw a Pikmin and stuff like that. You move around with the analog stick and so forth, you know. It's a lot of the same controls as the Pikmin 2 Wii control. Although, um, I didn't really find a button that can move your Pikmin around you. Um, I don't know if that's in the game or not. Um, but they did add the, a function where you press the C button on the nunchuck and it will switch to a different group of Pikmin, like, automatically. So, that's really helpful. <laughs> um, I played this the mode where you gather the fruits in, like, a certain time limit. I didn't get to go the whole time limit though because the the show was the experience event was ending, uh, but I did get to play like a couple of minutes of it and uh, it felt you know really smooth and everything. It looked really really nice. It's Pikmin three. Get excited for it! It's finally the Pikmin three. It, you know it, it's very cool. Um, I think there was also this, uh, yeah there was also like a battle mode. I didn't get to try that out, but pretty much you'd have the Pikmin also. Oh yeah, they had the Rock Pikmin on show. That's right. On, uh, in the uh, in the demo, you could uh, try out Rock Pikmin, and they're just pretty. Uh, they're pretty much one of the new types of Pikmin that are having out in the game, and uh, it's heavier than the other Pikmin, and it's also a little bit more durable. So you can throw it at like glass walls or enemies with glass armor or whatever, and they'll break really easily. Uh, for example, the boss battle, you throw your Rock Pikmin on it, and the glass will shatter on its back or whatever, and that um, exposes a vulnerable spot. And so you use that to your advantage and stuff like that, and um, it's really cool. Um, it's a really great looking Pikmin game, definitely recommend it. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and so the Wii experience ended shortly after my play, like, short demo playthrough of Pikmin 3. But what was kind of cool is that they had a little trivia thing going on in the end, and they asked a couple of questions about, uh, let's see if I remember, like the first question they asked was, what is the meaning of Nintendo? Um, let's see if you guys can know that. What is the meaning of Nintendo, like the word Nintendo? Um, can you name like three features of the uh, the Wii U that aren't that don't just don't just say improved graphics that didn't count? Um, I think in the end they actually wanted six, so it was like six different things about the Wii U. Most importantly, like the gamepad, um, and then also there's a question about um, what was Mario's original name. That's a pretty easy one. A lot of people knew that one, um, but they asked people the only person that they picked you know got something for that. I think it was like a little stuffed uh, doll or whatever. Um, and also during, actually I forgot to mention this, also during the show um, they had competitions sort of every so often like they had one for Donkey Kong Crash Course where you had, if you got the fastest time you'd win something. Um, we Fit You if you did the highest on this trampoline in a certain amount of time you'd win and then um, it was like one about like the fastest time in New Super Brothers Wii U and stuff like that. Um, so it was kind of nice. They really did uh, do a lot of things to make it really exciting to be there. Um, <laughs> and they also had like a little um, table in this corner where you can get drinks and some, like, I think it looked like cotton candy. But it was mostly just for drinks, like water and some Jones's soda. The water is also pretty interesting because on it it's, it says Wii U Experience in uh, Atlanta for because I was in the Atlanta one. And uh, that's actually pretty cool. You know, it's like a little personalized water bottle and stuff like that for the event. They had booths around the place where you could take photos and write about, you know, your experience on Facebook or whatever. And, um, yeah, that was uh, pretty much the event right there. Um, I didn't get to try out every game, unfortunately. Didn't have enough time. I did get to try a bunch of them. Like, pretty much I've talked about all the games I tried out. Um, I mean, I did get to see some other people play other games. Let's see, uh, saw a little bit of a game in Wario, like the, uh, there was like the Thief gameplay or whatever. Um, a little bit of like Project P100. Um, it's a little interesting. It's kind of like, it's got like the art style of a Beautiful Joe, sort of. Um, but it's 3D and, um, stuff like that, so. Um, I didn't really get to see too much of Batman Arkham City Armored Edition. There was always like a line in there. So I didn't get to see that one really at all. And I also didn't get to see the uh, that scene game or the Just Dance 4. Those games didn't really interest me too much. And I'd probably just make a fool of myself trying to play those games. So, oh well. Um, 
But see, so they ended off the experience with um, people, you know, they're like, you guys you had fun or whatever, we're like, yeah, you know, and then they also and they, uh, started chanting Wii U and gave us high fives as we left. Um, but they also gave us, you know, these uh, chocolate mustaches that I showed off, you know, at the beginning of this video. You know, it smells really good, you know. Oh, I can't wait to eat this, actually. Mm. Oh, that is good. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> I just ate my mustache. <laughs> well, anyways, that was a nice little parting gift they gave us. I remember, like, I think the group before us got, like, um, it, was, it was candy, like, gelatin gummies of, like, a, the shape of, like, a Koopa shell or a, a mushroom. But um, we got, well, I think everyone really got like, chocolate mustaches. So that's really cool. And um, overall, really, really a great time with the Wii U experience. Really fun. The Wii U really seems like a really cool system. I really love the gamepad. There's a lot of cool things that we can, uh, that were done with it and that can be done with it. I kind of wish maybe that a lot of the single player games could maybe use a little bit more so than just um, an inventory or as like, um, just yeah, just for inventory or radar. Maybe use it for like some really cool um, gameplay mechanics like puzzles or anything like that. So after all the Wii U experience, uh, which would be my favorite game? Um, I'd say probably my favorite game would be uh, Rayman Legends. I really did like the whole cooperation and actually the whole communication that you know you have to kind of do pretty much in order to get through the game successfully. Um, I really do think that that's the Wii U strong point is being in like the same room or hope maybe even online um, and just communicating you know saying okay this is what you gotta do and then they'll say to you you gotta do this you know and so the whole kind of working together aspect and you know, it just really makes it fun to play. Um, let's see, and then probably biggest surprise, um, probably the Wii Fit U, <laughs> um, really. Um, I wasn't really expecting to uh, play that game really at all, but it just kind of came up. No one was there. I just tried it out, and, you know, the mini games were surprisingly fun. Um, I really did enjoy them. I guess the Dessert Course game was the one that really used the gamepad, um, actually really at all, <laughs> that I tried out. So... Um, I really did enjoy that. It was it was interesting to try that out. But probably also, actually, no, probably even bigger surprise than that. <laughs> Sorry, is is the uh, those Nintendo Land mini games. Um, I didn't really know too much about them. Some people said they liked them. Some people said that you know there should be more or whatnot. I don't know exactly. But I I say they're great. They're awesome. Uh, it's a really cool idea. You know, um, better than Wii Sports, I believe. Um, really did enjoy the Luigi's Mansion one a lot. Um, I suppose I had more time with the Animal Crossing one, I'd probably like that one too, um, and more time in all, in general with the whole Nintendo Land itself. Um, I think it's a really cool idea. I didn't get to actually try, you know, walking around in Nintendo Land or whatever, just the mini games. But, I think that, you know, the mini games are good enough pretty much on their own, and it was, it was just really fun. You know, I mean, New Smart Brothers Wii U, it, it's fun. It's, it's pretty much classic Mario. Um, just kind of wish maybe they'd try some of the different things with it. But it looks nice. And Zombie U, um, it's a pretty cool concept and everything. Um, didn't really quite grasp the controls too well when I first tried it out. I'm pretty sure if I had more time with it, you know, with the actual copy of it or whatever, I'll probably have a lot more fun with that. And Pikmin 3, if I just had more some more time with that, that would probably be my favorite game. Those are my final thoughts on the games there. Um, and final thoughts on the Wii experience in general? Amazing. Really awesome job, Nintendo. That was great. Um, thanks for the invitation. I just had a blast. My friend had a lot of fun too, and um, I hope that if you know anyone else that got invited to do a similar event elsewhere or even in Atlanta, you know, have a great time. It really is a blast. Um, it's really cool to get to see the Wii U before you know the most of the public. So, <laughs> kind of a little some bragging rights out there. <laughs> That's pretty much my impressions on the Wii U experience and the Wii U in general um, for a first kind of look at it. Thanks for watching and uh, I'm going to continue eating my mustache. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Mmm. Very good.